There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Well, hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am, another Friday Reads, filming on characteristically late. It's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I've had a day. My Friday's been a bit of a dog's breakfast. To put it in as few details, as much of a paraphrase as possible, I had to switch my healthcare card from my old neighborhood to my new neighborhood. Bureaucratic nightmare because I left it more than a year. My bad. Possibility that I was going to be hit with a $500 fine. Went to the old city hall yesterday and they were so nice and they basically told me through the interpreter doing English language interpretation, interpreting, that I probably should get a fine but they didn't want to do all the paperwork that would be necessary to backdate everything and do this and to cancel that. So they said, let's pretend you moved to your new neighborhood today, shall we? And I said, thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Yes, ashi desu ne. You're so kind. So that went swimmingly. And they said, just take these three documents with you when you go to the new neighborhood city hall tomorrow, okay? One of them being my old health care card. I lost that old health care card yesterday. I think as I was leaving the old city hall yesterday, I lost it. Panic, panic, panic. To make a long story short, I went to the new city hall today and they didn't care about that. And I have my new health care card and all is well in my world. And it was good, good timing or it every, made everything worse this morning because I actually woke up with a sore throat and I needed to go to a doctor. So I went to the doctor, got so many pills, and here at 5 o'clock I'm filming my Friday reads. Oof. That story had a happy ending and I have more happy news. I have had a fantastic reading week. Victober has come and great reading experiences and I'm also finishing up. I haven't finished any of my Gone with the Book reading. I think my new attitude towards readathons, which I still love going forward, is I'm going to start them in the month or the week in which they launch on BookTube, but I'm not even going to pretend to f try to finish anything during those periods because I am a slow reader and I like to read right now I think a dozen books I'm reading at one time and that is the way to go um, which reminds me Lukash of Totally Pretentious put up a discussion video about a week ago that I want to do to do a response video to about that topic being a polygamous reader in terms of the books I finished they go back to women in translation one of them and another one something else so I finished four books one of them was a book that I started in Women in Translation and have done a very casual, lovely buddy read with Celia, and that is the second volume in Cora Sandel's Alberta Trilogy, Alberta and Freedom. I will be doing a full review. I love this book so deeply. Five stars should be eight star read. Stay tuned for my review, but it's not Nelly I am Heathcliff, it's Booktube. I am Alberta. <laughs> yeah. She is now my new new favorite writer on par with Barbara Pym. They're very different writers, but I love, based on two books, I love her books, and they speak to me. They speak to me even more deeply than Barbara Pym, but I, I love Cora Sandel's writing, beautifully translated by Elizabeth Rokan, uh, equally on par with Barbara Pym. You heard it here first. I also have finally finished, and those of you who follow me on Twitter or Goodreads, this won't be news, but some of you who don't will probably have been waiting with bated breath. I finally finished Ohio by Stephen... Uh, the Bugs. The Bugs, goddammit. Uh, I finally finished Ohio by Stephen Markley, and I loved it. It was a deeply flawed novel, and none of the flaws shook me off of a five-star rating for it, so I will be doing a full review. And Leo, thanks for bringing this novel into my life. This was a fabulous buddy read with Ollie Bliss. I'm still chewing on it. Hope if I have the health and the time this weekend to film a review of these these last two books and get them up there because this was stunning. I finished this short story by John McGairn and I'm still thinking about it and haven't sent my video to Doris but our discussion video will go up in the next week sometime and I'm gonna keep you all in suspense about my thoughts on this 
even my star rating on Goodreads. I will keep all that embargoed until our video goes up. I also finished this yesterday, Bob, I think yesterday, Bobcat and Other Stories by Rebecca Lee. This was a buddy read with Joe Smith, and I liked it very much. It was a four-star read. I think there was one five-star read, one maybe three-star, and everything else was a solid four-star read of these stories. Um, I don't know, uh, every time I try to review a short story collection, I just say, I don't know how to review a short story collection. The stories are good, they're well written. Some of them landed better than others. Just a little twinge of magical realism or uh, something beyond realism, but not enough to throw me off. But you know what bugs me about this book? Joe did it on ebook, and she had an extra story at the end that I didn't have called Settlers that's not in this. Weird. Anyway, that's all I know how to say about a collection of short stories, but I do recommend this highly, and I'm glad for Curtis of Curtis Books and Books bringing it to my attention. It was a gift from a litzy friend, Sarah, and it was languishing on my shelves, but I have now read it and very much enjoyed it. As a segue from this, I want to tell you about a story that was so much better than anything in here or any other short story I think I've read. Certainly, head and shoulders above anything that's in the Faber series of single bound short stories that I read in the anthology The Best American Short Stories 2018 edited by Roxane Gay and I'm doing this as a buddy read with Heidi of My Reading Life and we're doing a story a week and this week's story was The Prairie Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld and I had never read anything by Sittenfeld and this story is the queerest most satisfyingly queer piece of fiction I have read in years and I don't even know what where Curtis is Curtis Sittenfeld fits on that spectrum I don't care this story just absolutely stunning and it's featured in a New Yorker podcast on audio read by the author I'll put the link in the show notes if you read one short story this year it must be The Prairie Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld it's gonna blow your mind so that's what I have read no bales this week Sorry to let you down. And now that Victober is in full swing, I have started five new books, all of them for Victober. I have started the second volume of the Palliser series by Anthony Trollope, Phineas Finn, and I am not that far into it, a couple hours, I'm doing maybe three hours, something like that, in doing it on audio while following along with the Kindle. And I'm enjoying it, but I am, am struggling with the political stuff. I like politics. If you follow me on Twitter, I follow politics pretty avidly. But I'm finding it in this novel a bit of a tough slog. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking I need to read something about the politics so that I can get a better grasp on it, because I'm having trouble. I would, it would be impossible if I was only doing it on audio to figure out which political party, who's in, and what are the factions and stuff, I would be lost. But I haven't been listening to it on audio only. I've been doing it while reading, but I'm still having trouble keeping it all straight in my mind. So I think I might need a cheat sheet. I don't want any spoilers in the cheat sheet. I just want something that gives the background. I mean, I know this is a novel, but gives me the background of the politics, because I'm really struggling to keep it all straight in my mind. But still, it's Trollope, so I love it, and the narration by David Shaw Parker is to die for. Sharon Goforth and I are almost finished our buddy read of this 1899 novel, a writer of books by George Paston, the pseudonym for Emily Moore Simmons, and I speculated before, but it was too lazy to check, but I have now checked. Uh, Emily Moore Simmons, in fact, is a niece of John Addington Simmons. This isn't very good probably going to end up being a three-star read. It is a novel of ideas, and the writing is serviceable, but the characters are really just mouthpieces for a bunch of ideas, and the story is not holding my interest, so I'm kind of skimming, and I'll probably continue to skim my way to the end. Was that a print for a hundred years? I think I know why. It's not very good. So, anyway, maybe Britta will love it, because you're, Britta, you're reading it later this month for Victober. Sharon and I are enjoying discussing the ideas in it, but we're, you know, finding that there's not much else to it. The characters are kind of just scaffolding for a bunch of intellectual ideas. And one of the main ones is, how can a female writer write in the late 19th century? 
and it's fascinating to think about how little has changed. Maybe f the gender thing is more equitable now, to a certain degree, a, a century and or later, but making a living as a writer is still a tough slog, and this book chronicles that well, but it's not a very good novel. Part of the reason that it was so obvious that that novel, A Writer of Books, was so-so is because I also started this, George Gissing's The Odd Women, and oh my god, this is so good! I'm not very far, I'm 25 pages into it, and I'm just smitten with it. The writing, the characterization, the story, and everybody knows or you know what it's about. Poor women, and I think it's going to get more and more feminist the more the story goes on, but it's just lush. I, I'm so happy that I finally have gotten to this. This is a shapely literary novel. I'm in heaven. I have also started the Alice Deal novel, Griselda, that I mentioned in my TBR video. When I downloaded the Kindle, and then I went and compared it to the free Gutenberg downloads, the formatting of the text was all mashed up, and there was extra characters and stuff. It was just awful, and I thought, I can't read this. So then I went to, I think it's called internetarchive.org. When I googled the title, I found references to free downloads on that site. And if I haven't got the name of the website correct, it'll be written here, and I'll put a link in the show notes. Because they gave you the option of, of downloading it as ebook textually or PDF, which was a facsimile PDF. And I didn't, I just thought, well, I might as well try the PDF, which you can then import into Kindle. And it, I'm going to put up samples as I'm talking here. That's how I'm reading it. So I feel like I'm reading an old, old book. I just don't have the smell of the book, but the foxing, and, and it's, I don't like facsimile reprints usually, but this is very different. This feels like I'm reading a really old book and the, the font is fine. It's very readable and it adds an extra dimension to the reading experience that I was not expecting. And it's free, so don't let that ever hold you up from trying an out of print very obscure classic book because I'm having a ball with it. I'm it's really early days for the novel Griselda. I'm just about 40 pages into volume 1 and it's about a vicar and his wife out in the boonies midlands or something. And that's really all I can tell you. But the writing is fine. It's not even the writing's not even as good as it is in A Writer of Books by Simmons. But the story is interesting and holding my interest so far. That's all I can say. And just this morning, because I'm filming so late, I can tell you that I have started my buddy read of Wuthering Heights with Britta. I uh, just read the first three and a half chapters. Five, we're doing five chapters a day. And as I, prob as I probably told you before, I have read this at least twice in the past, but the last time would have been 25 years ago. And I thought I could remember almost nothing. It's slowly coming back, just faintly, like a remembering a dream I had five years ago kind of thing. Vaguely coming back, but the, the mostly the atmospherics of it are coming back. And I cannot believe how much I've enjoyed these first three and a half chapters. I remember that I always, I loved it each and every time I read it before, but I can't remember it why. Now I'm rediscovering it. It's just, compared to Anne Bronte's writing, even to uh, Charlotte Bronte's writing. Emily, she was the real writer. This is the gorgeously written. And I think it might break into my Sunday sentences. Do you think four or five Sunday sentences is too long? Wow, this is fantastic! So there's a few kind of misses, but mostly I am ecstatic about what I'm reading. Just having a blast! And I will start something else on my TBR. It might be the Charlotte Young. It might be something else. Lucas Malley novel. I don't know what I will start this week. I just don't have time to think about it right now. But I am going to read. I'm going to take my medicine for my sore throat and uh, put my feet up and read away the weekend. I hope that you've been having a great reading week where you are. And I expect a full report in the comments below. Thanks for watching.